Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. It is Friday. We're looking ahead to the weekend's football in the Premiership in the company of Alan Ruff and Barry Ferguson. Uh, today is about talking about football and also reflecting on a great man gone. The great and the good of the football world assembled at St Aloysius Church this morning at half past 11 to pay their respects to Celtic's greatest ever captain, Billy McNeil. He was the first Briton to lift the European Cup in 1967. Uh, and of course, he sadly passed away at the age of 79. Our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi uh, followed the funeral cortege. Today marked the funeral of Celtic's European Cup winning captain Billy McNeil. The biggest names in Scottish football were in attendance to pay their respects to their colleague, their leader, their friend. From the Lisbon Lions to Sir Kenny Dalgleish, Walter Smith to Sir Alex Ferguson, they all made an appearance outside Parkhead. They boarded buses that took them to St Aloysius Church in the centre of Glasgow where the service was held. By this time thousands had began to gather outside the stadium to tune in to the screening. McNeil's son spoke lovingly of his father, and legendary journalist Archie McPherson was eloquent as well as funny. After the service, the cortege made its way through the city centre via a packed George Square before being greeted at Celtic Park by tens of thousands of fans, paying their respects to the man they knew as Caesar. That big statue there says it when he's gone with that, with that big cup. And that's, that's where happy as me with all we'll get for Billy McNeil. Tremendous guy. Thanks to him for everything. It's been great to see Rangers fans putting flags down, scarfs down and tops down. And I saw all the different teams in Scotland, but it's mainly, he's been mainly part of Celtic. Well, Big Billy was a, the manager of the first team we got to see. Um, kind of late 70s, early 80s. Um, my father was in Lisbon and my grandfather was in Lisbon, so it's in the family. Celtic's greatest ever captain visited his stadium for one last time. As the cortege proceeded down Celtic Way, the hearse was showered in flowers, flags and scarves of green and white. The iconic image of McNeil with the European Cup aloft will never be forgotten, but the man behind the image, the teammate, the leader, the family man, he will also live on forever. Billy McNeil uh, sadly passed away at the age of 79 and uh, so many people turning out today, uh, players that played alongside him, so many people from the football world, not just here in Scotland but beyond and thousands of Celtic supporters and other football fans showing their respects outside Celtic Park to Billy McNeil. Now, we move on to football issues on and off the park, uh, looking ahead to the weekend's Premiership football, where uh, Billy McNeil's former club, Celtic, could indeed clinch the title. Uh, that's all to look forward to. You can give us your thoughts on, is this the weekend when the title will be heading back to Celtic Park for the eighth consecutive time, or will they have to wait till possibly Ibrox? Well... With Ibrox in mind, there's certainly a, a little bit of a celebration there. There's a double celebration, Barry Ferguson, manager and player of the month in Stephen Gerrard and Scott Arfield. Yeah, in terms of Scott Arfield, uh, I think over a, the, the last four or five weeks, he's certainly been top class, in my opinion. Um, the manager's obviously moved in position a bit further forward and he, he scored now six goals in uh, the last month, so... I think he's became a, a big player for Rangers. He's a player, to be honest, I always admired. And even when he was a young kid up here at Falkirk and he's went down to, to England and had a, a really good career. I was happy when Rangers signed him. And certainly the last, as I said, four or five weeks, he's really shown uh, what good a player he can be. Yep, OK. Um, Ruffy, as far as Stephen Gerrard is concerned, he'll probably be looking for uh, bigger prizes than Manager of the Month next season. Um, but it's certainly... Uh, from him, I would imagine vindication that he's doing things right. There's a bit of consistency now starting to creep into Rangers week in, week out. Yeah, since the Celtic game, they have motored on. Uh, I don't know if that's because of the introduction that uh, Davis and Defoe 
who have made a big difference and uh, and players round about them like Arfield have have, have got better. Uh, that's sometimes that happens when you get that kind of quality in your side. But no, it, again, the Celtic game coming up is another judgment of you know where Rangers are. You know, and I think Rangers know now in a one-off game that they can compete with Celtic. It's the long term that he has to get players in for to for the whole season, not just one game. It's okay, you want to win these games. But there is a bigger picture out there. Yeah, OK, so manager and player of the month at Ibrox. But who's going to pick up the manager of the year? Well, the nominees are out and on Sunday uh, we'll be handing over a gong to either Dick Campbell, Steve Clark, uh, Steve Ferguson or Stuart Kettlewell and Jim Goodwin. Ferguson and Kettlewell, obviously, a double act up there at Ross County. Who gets the nod for you, Barry? Well, first and foremost, I think four good contenders. I think all four of them um, had really good seasons. Um, personally, I think the vote will go for Stevie Clark for the simple fact is the consistency levels that he's shown at Kilmarnock since he's since he arrived there. Fantastic season last <coughs> last year, and they've kicked on again. And every time I watch him, Peter, I'm always impressed with him. Now I know that comes down to the players, but that's also what he does on the training field and his man management or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I think four good contenders, but I, I do think Stevie Clark, the, the consistency levels, will, uh, will get it. Ruffy? Yep, I, I think Stevie Clark as well. I think the other three lads have all done well in their own right with their own uh, circumstances. But I just think Stevie Clark has taken Kilmarnock to another level. He's not only taken them to another level, he's taken individual players to another level as well. You can see the standard that he's obviously set there and the players have responded and I, I think they've been fantastic for nearly the whole season. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, who uh, picks it up. But I have to say, I have to give a special mention to uh, Dick Campbell. I'm sure so many people were looking and thinking to themselves, well, wait a minute, uh, you know, Stevie Clark hasn't won anything. Dick Campbell's record is uh, unbelievable in guiding so many clubs to promotion, uh, e either through playoffs or indeed winning titles. It's absolutely incredible, isn't it? Yeah, I, I say I think Steve Clark will get it if it was my choice. Yeah. I would give it to Dick Campbell. Yeah. Since the first game of the season, they have been top of the league all the way through. Um, and I think he'll do a fine job in the Championship. Um, he's got a great record, Dick Campbell. But I just get a feeling who's ever voting will go for Stevie Clark. Yeah, interesting times. Um, OK, Derek McInnes picked up a, a, a one-match ban. It was uh, late yesterday when eventually the news came out. Uh, this was for his reaction to some sectarian singing towards him. Um, Again, one match ban, I think it's slightly harsh, okay, should have cooled his jets on it. But um, the nature of his ban reflects uh, on our groups of supporters, and in this case it was Celtic fans who were singing uh, something towards uh, Derek McInnes that he had to react to. You know, yesterday we had Leanne Dempster talking about, you know, society's moved on we should be able to actually accept a, a man who comes out to plays football who says that he's gay i don't think society's moved on i think you know that issue yesterday we'd be, be given a hard time we're giving managers a hard time because of the religion mm -hmm. yeah i think we have to realize now that uh, although we concentrate on the players the managers themselves are individuals and and under the same pressure uh and more pressure uh, actually in certain games and, and they, they have to deal with it as well as far as the a, a player coming out being gay I don't think we're anywhere near that you know I think unfortunately we've got certain men of individuals still hovering about that would make it hard for the person who came out and that's that's a sad reflection in our society yeah absolutely I, I mean you know racism sectarianism all you would need is homophobia kicking in again yeah it, it's sad that if there is a player that he's scared to come out, because yeah. I, I do think he would get a hell of a lot of support in the football world. But I don't think right. there's one, Barry. I think there's more. I think there's lots of players who might be gay who just yep. would be living in fear of what. I don't yeah, need no, to I ask. I totally them. agree with you, and it's sad. That's what I'm saying. It's sad that these players can't come out because uh, they would get absolute ridiculed in the stands. Um, but one thing they would get would get the full support of whatever club they played with. And uh, they're obviously fellow professionals. I think I think players have moved on. Yeah. I, I think they'd get a lot of support for this 
players in the team. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, if they if, if they come out, you know, I think you would be united <coughs> in the dressing room as one of your one of your own. You get the odd idiot, but <coughs> that's just the nature of uh, of life. Uh, you know, through anything, you know, whether it's prejudice towards people, uh, the religion, or whatever, but. Uh, they certainly would get the backing on this programme if they did indeed come out and uh, proclaim they were gay. Um, here's the winner of our quiz. There's the winner. Well done. Um, <coughs> we'll have a, a new quiz question on Monday again. Uh, you're watching Peter and Ruffy's football show. Delighted that you could join us. Uh, <coughs> and now it's time to look towards the weekend's Premiership because, of course, up at Pataudry with the early kickoff tomorrow, uh, Celtic could clinch it if they manage to avoid defeat <coughs> against Aberdeen. Um, Neil Lennon obviously will be keen to do that. And, uh, of course, the players have got a job to do. Callum McGregor especially saying he knows exactly what they have to do against a very difficult side in Aberdeen. But, you know, we need to we need to first and foremost look at Saturday. Um, you know, we've got a big opportunity to, to finish the league and um, you know, with everything that's going on at the club just now, it's you know, we have to do our job, prepare properly and then, you know, go and get the result that we need at the weekend to, you know, top off, you know, that sort of tribute for the week for the club. Yep, uh, Cup in their thoughts later on. It's all about getting the league and I, I think Ruffy they'll want to get it done and dusted. A Pataudry. Yeah. Everybody's thinking maybe Rangers, but <clears throat> I don't think so. No, no, you want it out of the way. You know, you don't want to be going to Ibrox and uh, the pressure will mount because of that game sits by itself. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, you want it out of the road uh, as soon as possible because there are obviously big games coming up. Yeah, you wouldn't want to go to your, your arch rivals and um, try and get that, that victory or that point. I do think Celtic will go up there. Listen, I think it's going to be a cagey affair. But I do think they will get the point that they need. Yep. Um, as far as Aberdeen are concerned, there's still a battle for third. There's still something for them to play for, Ruffy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's everything to play for. You know, the season's coming to an end. Manager will be making his mind up what players are staying, what players are going. So you, you're, you're playing to impress the manager as well as the supporters as well. So you've still got something to play for. So I, I, I agree with Barry. I think it will be a really feisty game. Everybody's talking about the job that Stephen Gerrard will have to do in building his side, but this could be, uh, and, and I think almost certainly, uh, these games are the last few games where a number of Celtic players will be saying goodbye because they are heading out that door. And I'm not talking one, two or three. I think there's a right good five, six, seven and eight. He'll be on their way. Yeah, I agree with all the talks about Rangers and who they're going to um, buy or, or, or bring in. Um, I think Celtic are in the, the same scenario. I think there's going to be a lot of movement in there in the summer. Players going and players coming in. Because um, I agree with you, I think it's the end for some of these players and I think Celtic need freshened up. Yeah, as far as uh, Rangers against Hibs, that takes place on the Sunday. And I think, <coughs> Ruffy, because of the nature of you know the manager of the month and Stephen Gerrard, if you look back at Rangers' results, now people are actually starting to look and think there's a consistency about them. They feel confident about taking Hibs at home, whereas in the last couple of seasons, Hibs have been a thorn in their side. Yeah, and that just shows you where Rangers have come as as individuals in the team. You know, if you look at their team, man on man, you know that they have improved. There is no doubt about that, and I'm sure Stephen Gerrard would want maybe another three or four in first team players in, not sitting in the side. You know, and you can see the strength just growing from year to year, and uh, I think they're flying just now. And uh, everything's going well. And of course, let's not forget, Ruffy, at Hibs, they'll have their own changes. But one uh, of the players that will be on the way that we haven't discussed in any great detail, Scott Allen. He'll be going back to Hibs. He'll be joining up there in a, a, a new deal. Yeah, well, if he does as well, it's the first time he was there. I think the fans will be absolutely intrigued when he gets there. He's a, he's a wonderful player who sees a pass that others don't. And uh, obviously we keep talking about the others that have moved on. But with Allen being there winning you know, the Player of the Year award and everything, and then him coming in, it just gets them back to the 
that kind of individual midfield player. Yep. Um, Saturday we've got four games. I'm tempted to head to Fir Park for Motherwell against St Mirren, but there are other <coughs> matches which um, have implications at the bottom end as well. Dundee Hamilton uh, is the one that everybody will be keeping their eye on. Jim Hamilton hasn't quite got the open backing of the board. Um, I wonder if they will keep him in the summer if it, if Dundee are relegated. I, I hope he stays. I have my doubts about that that board. Yeah, it was a strange statement, let, let's be honest. Um, but listen, Jim's experience, uh, experienced enough. He'll not let that try and affect him. I say it to the players this week in training. It's a massive game. That, look, Dundee need to win it if they've got any chance. But I can't see them winning it, I'll be honest with you. Because Hamilton always pull a result out. I'm not saying Hamilton will go up there and win, but I do <laughs> think that it's going to be a draw. Yeah, it's amazing, Ruffy. We started off this season giving it. Hamilton are going down. <laughs> I certainly had them written off again because I thought they'd lost too many players. But slowly but surely, they eventually had to change the manager because they were getting panicky. But Brian Rice, to his credit, has come in. He's actually changed, in many ways, the way they play. Yeah, he has. And individuals as well are, are coming to the fore. People we never heard about before are getting a chance. And uh, it must be a horrible feeling being in the bottom three, you know, nearly the whole season and then waiting for this split to come and seeing whether your players can respond to it. So it must be a nervous situation for them as well. Great credit to Steve Clark uh, being nominated for Manager of the Year. Um... I have to say, <laughs> last year at the PFAs, uh, when we were doing the interviews, we liked to have a bit of fun, as you know, Barry, with the managers and the players. And he just walked past me and he, he said, and I'm changing a few words here and there, he looked at me and he went, thank God I didn't win that manager of the year, having to go up on that stage with you. You never know, I might get the chance uh, this time to have a bit of banter with him. But he's against the Hearts side at Tynecastle. I can't work out at Hearts. They're in the Scottish Cup final. You should be battling for your places. You don't know what performance you're going to get from one week to the next. Yeah, I was disappointed them. Uh, disappointed, sorry, in them uh, in uh, Edinburgh Derby. Uh, I know the last 10, 15 <coughs> minutes they came into it, but I thought Hibs dominated that full game. And as you say, there's a, a massive Cup final coming up. You would think people would be running through brick walls. Um, but... I, get, I just look at Stevie Clark and I think when is this going to end? Or this fairy tale watched them last week against Celtic. I thought they were different class. Yeah, they just went to Celtic Park with no fear, attacked them. Some great performances. Guys who I thought were decent enough players, but these these guys are turning in top performances week in week out, and that's got to be down to the manager. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that uh, Craig Levine will be telling his players exactly what's at stake and it's a cup final, you know, and he'll be telling them before this game, you're all playing for your place and that's why I think you might get a performance off them uh, and I'm going to go for them to win. Oh, there you are, We twisting the tail. Uh, I'll go for them to draw because uh, I can't pick between them. Motherwell against St Mirren, St Mirren... Uh, you know, uh, games are running out now. Uh, I think Motherwell at home with all these youngsters. Uh, Stephen Robinson's already come out and mentioned that he's not bitter towards Jake Hasty over the Rangers move. He's He's been advised and he's going to take the chance to go and stake his claim for a starting place at Ibrox. But um, do you think the Motherwell fans will give him any chip for deciding that? Yeah, uh, well, fans. Uh, yeah, some fans will, and so some fans uh, will understand. But what, what people have got to think is, look, when a club of that size comes calling and you've got an opportunity to go, listen, that the guy has made a decision. Is it a right decision? We'll find out. But I, I really like him. I think he's a top talent. Mm. Um, you just don't want him going to Rangers and maybe disappearing a wee bit. But he's been fantastic since he's come back for Alawa um, and Motherwell. Steve Robin, uh, Robinson, you've got to give him credit. Changed the style of play, brought in a lot of these youngsters, and they've kicked Mono on. It'd be interesting to see if they play him. You know, obviously he's got the, the mother one managers got the future to think of. He's got other players in there. It'd be nice to let the boy play the last couple of games because I'm sure the fans have enjoyed what they've seen and, and, and young players move on. There's nothing you can do about it. Can St Mirren win and upset the odds and suddenly put the pressure on Aki's? No doubt they can win. I don't oh, think I'm they just will. Saying, no, I don't I, think they I'm will. Sorry, I, I actually, I, played, yeah. I can't believe I allowed you to give me probability again. Um, do you think, think they'll they do it? No, no, I don't think they will. I think no. Mother will at home. I've been particularly good in the last two or three home games. Mother for me. 
my love for you, St Johnson against Livingston. Uh, a game that it's one of those ones where I think Tommy Wright will reflect on this season and think, mm, didn't really pan out the way I wanted it to. For Gary Holt, I think he should just hold his head up high. What do you think, Ruffy? Yeah, I think uh, Livingston have been impressive for, I would say, two thirds of the season. Uh, unfortunately, they never made the, the top six, which they looked as if they were going to. Uh, but I know credit to St Johnson I think they're always there or thereabouts and uh, he will be disappointed because we wanted to kick on for last year but he's lost players as well you know so he'll be looking to see if he can get players in for the next two or three years uh, For me I think Livy Gary Holt's done a great job same squad as it was in the championship so he can um, he can give his sale a part in the back but I think St Johnson will win the game OK, um, thanks to uh, Barry and Ruffy. We'll see Ruffy uh, as a teammate, as part of the whole team. He'll be there at the uh, uh, PFA Awards. Baz, first time you're missing it in a long while. You've been you've been a good team player. Yeah, I'm not a team player, yeah. but listen, I double booked. Yeah. But I'll make it up. Yeah, absolutely. Of course you will. Ruffy will make it up because <laughs> the predictor is so far behind. He's going to end up buying us a lovely meal. And because you know your red wine, we are going to get a humdinger of a night out. Um, OK, join us on Monday. If you can, we'll reflect on the weekend's football. Will it be Celtic uh, winning the title again? On a day uh, filled with sadness with so many Celtic fans out there paying their respects to their greatest ever captain, who uh, was the leader of their greatest ever team. Thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.